Hi and welcome. I'm Pamela Harrison from Intel, here to tell you about the latest Intel GPA news and updates. The 2022.1 release has focused primarily on enhancements enabled by discrete GPUs, including ray tracing and XE super sampling capabilities. For this release, for Graphics Frame Analyzer, we have added support for DirectX Ray Tracing, DXR, for DirectX 12 applications. Now, see data per shader in our new shader table. This means you can dig into details like how many times a shader executed, as well as its execution duration. This quick view of shader details helps you know which shaders need attention when you have a ray tracing bottleneck, for example. We have added support for XE Super Sampling, XESS. When your application takes advantage of Intel's new XE Super Sampling technology to upscale your images and enhance the visual quality of your scenes, you aren't going in blind. Intel GPA will show you how much or how little performance XESS demands, allowing you to consider this alternative to improving shaders, textures, and geometry to achieve that great visual quality you want. For Graphics Trace Analyzer, we have added support for Intel Media SDK and OneVPL. These video processing optimization APIs increase performance on the streaming parts of your applications. When you analyze your app that uses these APIs with Graphics Trace Analyzer, you will now see the execution details of the encoding and decoding calls. For Intel GPA Framework, we have added support for XE Super Sampling. GPA Injector now has a flag that enables you to choose to skip injection of processes you aren't interested in. GPA Player now reports its process name as the name of the original captured process, allowing you to profile these processes with driver-level game-specific optimizations. Also, we added support for Windows 11. To begin, in Graphics Frame Analyzer, we've added support for DirectX Ray Tracing, DXR, for DirectX 12 applications. In this frame, notice the large dispatch rays call. As is typical, dispatch rays takes a significant amount of a frame's execution time. Clicking on that call in the bar chart We'll highlight that call in the API log in the left panel and also open the resource panel. The resource panel shows the list of input execution and output resources that are defined for that call in the global root signature. In the set of execution resources, you will find the shader table. Click on it to display the list of all possible shaders that can be executed on a dispatch raise call. There are several columns that can be enabled or disabled by clicking on the Shader Table Settings button and toggling the column names on or off. The Hardware Thread Count column indicates how many threads executed each shader. To determine the total number of times a shader was executed, multiply the thread count times the SIMD width, 8, 16, or 32 based on the shader code, times the SIMD thread occupancy. The duration column shows the relative duration for each shader's execution, with the total sum of that column being 100. You can sort the data in the shader execution table, either ascending or descending, by clicking the arrow at the top of any of the columns. The SIMD occupancy column is useful to double check a thread dispatch bottleneck. When you see that thread dispatch is a primary or secondary bottleneck, it is likely that most of the shaders have occupancy lower than 80. 80% 80 is low. The GPU should not spend so much time without work. Here, the SIMD occupancy column allows you to quickly identify potentially problematic shaders. The blue lines allow you to get a quick visual of the values in various columns. Explore the remaining columns when you download this release. Our second highlight is Graphics Frame Analyzer's support for XE Super Sampling. With Graphics Frame Analyzer, you can check the performance details of the XESS implementation and verify the resulting visual quality. 
you can see how long it takes XESS to execute, whether it is a bottleneck, and whether it fits your expected time allowance. We show all the XESS resources and the image size, which here you can see is upscaled. So if you view a texture before upscaling, it might be 1280 by 720, and after upscaling, you see that it has changed to something bigger like 2560 by 1440. For our third highlight, let's take a look at Graphics Trace Analyzer's new support for Media SDK and OneVPL. A portion of your application may stream content. For a game, you might stream video introduction or some between scene commentary or instructions. Using Intel's video processing APIs can significantly speed up your encoding and decoding, increasing the FPS for your streaming content. Let's look at the calls we can see in Graphics Trace Analyzer after capturing data from an application that uses OneVPL to decode a short video clip. First, we open Graphics Monitor to capture the trace. Unlike a rendering workload, you won't see anything during the capture. Before capturing the trace, switch to Trace Mode. Then go to the Trace tab in the Options pane. If your video is short, you will want to toggle Capture Application Startup to On so you don't miss capturing the beginning of the, the app's execution. Also, toggle the Intel Media SDK One VPL option to On so that you will capture the Codex API's call. Then go back to the initial pane of Graphics Monitor and start the trace capture. You can see here that I used a batch file so that I won't have to remember all the arguments I need. You see nothing happen until the trace file thumbnail appears in the upper right corner of Graphics Monitor. Open that trace, scroll down to the main thread, zoom in and see one VPL calls like this decode frame async call. As always, when you select a call, you see detailed information in the selected items panel at the bottom of the window. Fourth and finally, for those of you who want to automate some of your profiling work, use our command line tool, Intel GPA Framework. I mentioned some of the new features, several of which augment the discrete GPU profiling ability of GPA Framework. And now for a demo. In previous videos, I've demoed various commands such as capture, capture with the HUD layer, playback, and deferred capture. Today, I will demo how GPA Stream Analyzer can help automate a portion of your profiling workflow. The command works with our Python scripts to allow you to easily automate or verify parameters are within specified ranges without spending too much time writing your own scripts. I will guide you through the steps you can take to produce a data file and corresponding plot that summarize the range of frames where the performance is outside of a threshold. You will need to install Python if you don't already have it. And for plotting the CSV file data, you can download and install matplotlib and pandas. First, create stream data by running GPA st stream analyzer on a stream you previously captured, redirecting output to stream.csv. Now, Stream.csv is a list of pairs, frame number, and corresponding milliseconds of time that it took to capture the frame. To filter the data to account for a specified amount of frame-to-frame -frame variation, run our moving average Python script on stream.csv, specifying the number of rolling frames. I chose 30 and redirecting output to moving average.csv. After that, you can classify the resulting data series relative to a threshold by using our partition.py script on movingAverage.csv, producing partition.csv. I chose 30 for my threshold so that I call out the ranges of frames that take more than 30 milliseconds to capture. Plot the output. And now the final step is to run summarize.py with partition.csv as input and summarize.csv as output with two other parameters, the partition data series and a mask for the threshold. Compare the contents of summarize.csv 
with a partition plot. You can see from the summarized file that there are at least four partitions. The first partition is not listed, so it has no frames that exceed 30 milliseconds. The second partition starts at frame 30 and has only one frame in it. The fourth partition begins at frame 73 and has 30 frames that exceed 30 milliseconds capture time. So we use the GPA stream analyzer command followed by three Python commands to find out where performance is outside our desired threshold. Add these commands to a script to easily do daily or weekly quick analysis check. This concludes the four highlights of release 2022.1. Try out these features and more with our free downloads of Intel GPA and Intel GPA Framework. For the full list of updates and changes for both the Intel GPA Analyzer tools and Intel GPA Framework, take a look at our release notes. Thank you for watching. For more information about the Intel GPA 2022.1 release and to download Intel GPA for free, see the links. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the Intel Software YouTube channel for more Intel GPA news and updates.